Guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk Leeds United. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. Um, first of all, I'd just like to apologise for my absence lately. It's been a bit of a, a hectic period and um, I just haven't had the time, but I vow to be more consist uh, consistent from now on. Um, yes, I've got quite a few things to talk about today, just like general Leeds United news, really. Um, I'm going to timestamp things at the bottom. So if I'm talking about something you're just not that bothered about or have already heard about, then you can just fast forward to the timestamp. So they'll be in the description below. Um, so, yeah, let's jump into it. Exclusive from Joe Donoghue regarding Finley Gorman, obviously our talented 15-year-old. Finley Gorman is a subject of significant interest from Man City, the Yorkshire Evening Post understands. A 15-year-old winger already a regular for Leeds under 18s and uh, under si England under 16s, made his debut early this year at age 14, um, set for a six-figure compensation should he leave. Now, this one oh, just aggravated me. Six-figure comp compensation, that's nothing. You know, that, that's probably around what we make on a, a, on a match day. And if any of you have got a minute or two to spare, if you haven't already, go and check out this kid. Um, there's videos on Twitter. I think there's even videos on YouTube. Go and have a look at, at the talent this boy possesses. Okay, you've got to look at who he's playing against. He's playing against other 14, 15, 16-year-olds. And I understand that. And obviously, he's by no means ready uh, to make the step up to professional, you know, you know, playing in the championship. But... In a year or two, I think he's going to be an absolute phenomenal player. And it, it doesn't surprise me at all that a club like Man City is sniffing around. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out, right? So, thankfully, Archie Gray has broke through, right? And if any, if, you know, if anything, that will show uh, Finley Gorman that he has a pathway to the first team. If, if it's not already been shown before, it's definitely been shown in Archie Gray. He's playing every minute of every game pretty much. So I'm hoping Finley Gorman sits there, his family sits there and he thinks, right, if I go to City, am I ever going to see the grass? Or am I just going to get loaned back out and then and get a chance in five years' time? Or if I stay at Leeds, in, in a year or two, I could be playing first-team football. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. Um, it's very irritating that that's the, you know, the way it is these days. They can sort of snap him up um, before he signs a first-team professional contract. So, you never know. That might um, sort of make Leeds... He might play Leeds' hand a bit and, and you know, get us... Getting getting him into the into into the first team. I mean, I know he's 15, but if it helps us keep him, then why not give a ninth uh, bench spot to him and, and get him along to these games? And you never know if we're 4-0 up at home, give him f five minutes at the end. I, I know it sounds like much, but... Um, we need to do all we can to keep these people. So maybe maybe if we get them tied down, it, you know, it might um, starve off a bit of interest or help us get a better fee for him. So it'd be interesting to see how uh, that one plays out. Um, well, it'd be in the next like six months to a year, won't it? Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Now, always a bit of a touchy subject, it seems to be. Um, Liam Cooper and Luke Ayling. Um, I know this was a couple of days ago now, but I haven't shared my opinion uh, opinion yet. So, uh, as uh, Phil Hay tweets, um, this is Liam Cooper's testimonial season at Leeds United. It could have been Saudi for him in the summer and a two million a, a, a year deal, but his preference was to stay and seek a twelve month extension. As it stands, his deal his deal was up in June. So what next? Now, um, I I know this always ruffles a few fans, um, but Luke. Uh, Luke Hayling and Liam Cooper are in the exact same category for me. And um, I don't say this sarcastically because people do, but literally I thank them for their loyal service and for being at a club, for, for being at our club for so long. And always, to be fair to both of them, they do always give 100%, even though I don't think either of them are, are brilliant. They always do give 100% for the shirt. But that's a minimum I expect for anyone playing for Leeds anyway. Right, because we all would give a hundred percent, so that's a minimum that I expect. I'm not going to thank them just for that, right? Because that—that's what I expect anyway. Um, guys, it's time to move on from these people. Liam Cooper, Luke Ayling, it's time to move on, right? And that's not me saying thanks for the service. See you later, mate. In a sarcastic way, like I said, it's literally genuinely thank you for the service. But we now need to move on from these players, right? 
we're not L- Liam Cooper United. We're not Luke Ayling United. We're Leeds United. Okay, we're a massive club, right? We should be in the Premier League. Now, I've got a question for you. This is the way I look at it. If we released Luke Ayling and Liam Cooper, how many teams in the Championship do you think would look to sign them up instantly? Oh, Liam Cooper's a free agent. I'm going to get him. Luke Ayling's a free agent. I'm going to get him. I think there'd be a couple, but I don't think there'd be many, right? And especially not in the top half. You would never see teams like Leicester. I don't know. Maybe even Ipswich, Southampton. That they wouldn't be interested, right? So why? So why is that the bar that we're setting, right? And that's not me saying get rid of them tomorrow. I think they've got a role to play this season. But I think even if we just stay in the championship, I think we need to move on from these people. And at a minimum, if we get to the Premier League, they just have to go. They can't even be there to bolster the ranks. We need better than them too, right? And I'm sorry if that offends any of you. And if you disagree, then please um, get your comments in the section below. Or even if you agree, get your comments in the section below. I'd be interested to hear what you think about it. Um, they've had a good run at the club. Um, in my opinion, they should have left a couple of years ago. And uh, Listen, it's not an agenda against either of them. I just don't think they're, they're good enough, <laughs> basically, for Leeds United. I think they're, you know, half-decent championship players. But I just don't think they're good enough for Leeds United. And, you know, I'm sorry if that offends anyone. But, yeah, that, that's that's my opinion on that matter. Guys, yesterday, Leeds United had their 104th birthday. Um, our fantastic club is 104 years old. And, um, yeah, a, a nice tweet from LUFC Data. If you don't already follow, go and follow on Twitter, LUFC Data. So let's run through the stats for some of you who haven't got Twitter. Um, in total, 7,045 goals, 4,718 matches, 1,981 games won. So what's that in the percentage? Nearly two in five. So you're looking at about, yeah, not the best win rate, <laughs> but 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 not, not too bad, I guess. About 35, 40% win rate. Um, 1,441 clean sheets, 874 players, 582 Premier League games, 177 red cards, 167 different opponents. That's interesting. 126 hat-tricks, 97 seasons, 77 debut scorers, 40 permanent managers. I mean, 20 have been in the last 20 years, haven't they? Something like something mad like that. Um, 16 penalty shootouts, 13 club honours. Eight promotions, eight relegations, seven league titles. I think, uh, how many of them are top division? Three, is it? I think three top division titles. Uh, two charity shields, two Intercity Fairs Cup, which is basically like the UEFA Cup, Europa League. Uh, but although it was a bit more difficult to to get into that, I think, um, was it the top two went into the European Cup and then third and fourth went into into the intercity fairs. So like nowadays, obviously top four go to the European Cup and then you can come eighth and still get into Europe. So it was more difficult back then. One FA Cup, one League Cup. And also on this list, which should be there, which isn't, we should have one European Cup, 1975, absolutely robbed. And some fantastic pictures there as well. So we've got Don Rivy, Howard Wilkerson, and I'm so glad this was there, Marcelo Bielsa. And then uh, the, the lads there with the um, top division title, division one title. So yeah, and it sort of homes back to the point I was just making about Liam Cooper and Luke Ayling. Um, this this is Leeds United, a 104-year-old club, right? It, it's not Sentiment FC. I know people say it, but it's really not. Like, we're, we're you know, a massive club. We've been around for a long time. You know, don't worry about hurting the feelings of, of two individuals, OK? Um, but, yeah, moving on from that. Moving on, guys. Archie Gray. According to Baron Cross, Daniel Farker had hoped Archie Gray would not need to play all three of England under 19 fixtures. Not only did he start them, but he finished all three too. This that means the 17-year-old played five full matches across a 13-day period for club and country. Um, now, you know, some people might just sort of read this and skim past it, and, and that and that's fine, right? But for me, we need to be careful. We need to be very careful. 17-year-old um, body still developing, still maturing. We need to make sure he doesn't get burnt out, right? And it's very annoying that he actually played all three games for England um, 
Obviously, I understand he's got ambitions and stuff, bless him. He's going to want to play for England, isn't he, at any level. So I get that. And I'm not saying he shouldn't have played, but it would have been nice if, you know, they just sort of looked at it and thought, well, um, we don't we don't want to we don't want to injure him. Let's just hook him off for 20 minutes. I don't know. Um, or, or give him or give him half of the middle game or something. But we need to be careful with Archie Gray because he's planned a lot of minutes more than he should be, in my opinion. So I, I don't know whether it should be Norwich away or the game after, but I, I think he really could do with a, a rest. Whether that's plays half a game for two games or comes off around 55, 60 minutes for a couple of weeks, I don't know. But what we don't want is him to get burnt out, to pick up an injury that like dampens or hampers the rest of his um, career. You know, you, you just got to be so careful. So, yeah, that was very irritating um, to see. Guys, so obviously we're all um, Uruguay fans now because obviously God is uh, their manager himself. And I don't know if any of you saw, last night they beat Brazil 2-0. Now, I know this isn't directly Leeds United news, but it did bring a smile to my face. Um, you know, oh, we want the best for Bielsa, don't we? And in the World Cup, um, we're going to be cheering on Uruguay, obviously, other than England or, or Scotland or Wales or wherever you're from. But yeah, um, beat them 2-0. They had their full team out. And yeah, some uh, the goal they scored was typical Bielsa football and it's just beautiful to see. So yeah, just a quick one on that one. I know it's not directly Leeds United related, but sort of is because, you know, um, it's Bielsa, isn't it? And uh, quickly, just to touch on um, Calvin Phillips, I, I don't know why, but the last like, week or so, we've seen a load of things about would you take him back? Would you take Phillips back? Could we get him on loan? Listen, first of all, I don't think he's going to come back anyway. Right. And second of all, I, I don't I don't think I would. Oh, it's a hard one because, you know, I love Calvin Phillips, but we have to move on. <laughs> we can't keep living in the past. And I don't know, you know, you know maybe, maybe there is um, room for him to come back someday. But I like what we've got at the moment. I like Ethan Ampadu and I like Archie Gray. And I know that sounds mental when Phillips, you know, was so good. But guys, he isn't the player he was. Um, he really isn't. And, he, you know, he wasn't even the same player. As, as soon as Bielsa left, he he, he he became very average, right? Before Bielsa, he, he was very average. And then Bielsa made him brilliant. And then since Bielsa, since he stopped working with Bielsa, he's become very average again. And I'm sorry to say that because I love Calvin Phillips as well. And, I, you know, I do think he's a decent player, but... Um, He's not going to play in the championship anyway, but so it's pretty much if we got promoted, right? And if we got promoted, do we want to go back to to all that? I don't know. I don't know. In my opinion, I, I'd rather just leave it in the past and wish him all the best. And maybe some some day down the line he could return. But for me, I, I would just say no, personally. Um, and obviously, guys, we've got Norwich at the weekend. Going to be a tricky one, very tricky one away to Norwich. Um, I will be doing a... Um, uh, a preview of that game um, probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, so, yeah, if you've enjoyed the content, uh, content, guys, please smash a like, subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you get your comments in because I read and reply to 99.9% .9 of them. Um, so, yeah, that would that would mean a lot. And um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll, I shall see you again probably tomorrow.